This podcast episode is brought to you by Audible.com. To receive a free book of your choice, please visit www.audibletrial.com slash mysticaccess. Enjoy! Welcome to the Mystic Access Podcast, where the magic is in learning. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of the Mystic Access Podcast. She's Kim. He's Chris. And today is February 5th, 2016. Already in February. How is that possible? It's very possible. I do hope that the groundhog is correct, though, and that spring is just around the corner. All our snow, we've had snow here in drifts for a couple weeks since that last big snow, and that finally has all melted in this crazy 60-degree weather that we had over the last few days. So it was a balmy first of the week, and now we're back to the 30s for the highs. So welcome back to winter. But it's it's February, and it's supposed to be in the 30s. So. It is, although sometimes February, at least down south here, we have some strange, mild days and crazy stuff happens and you never quite know and then march can kind of be the same way but february is known to be kind of mild occasionally so Mm -hmm. i hope wherever you guys are that you're having a nice winter however you most prefer it or a nice summer depending on nice summer depending on where you are in the world which hemisphere you are residing in exactly we've got a lot of fun stuff to share with you today we've got some fun announcements to share today Mm -hmm. the first thing i wanted to talk about is an FTP client that I used years and years and years ago. I believe I did a podcast on it for Blind Cool Tech back in 2005, 2006, somewhere around there. And it's called WebDrive. And it is one of those clients that mounts your FTP sites as if they were network drives. So you access your files through Windows Explorer. So how accessible can that be? As long as Windows Explorer, your file manager of choice, is accessible, you can use WebDrive. Now, back in, I believe, 2011 or 2012, I abandoned WebDrive because they created a new user interface and we all know how new user interfaces sometimes go. Yes, you start quaking in terror when you hear, brand new user interface, and you're like, oh, no. (laughs) Exactly, and I could not add connections. I could modify connections, but the new, new connection wizard was completely silent. So I was on Twitter, and I got a tweet from South River Technologies, who is the manufacturers of WebDrive, and they came out with a 2016 version. Now, keep in mind, I haven't used it in quite a number of years, and I decided to install it to see if any quote-unquote improvements or not happened. So I install it, and I couldn't access my, you know, I couldn't create new connections, but I imported my previous connections. One of the newer features of WebDrive, and I'm going to get into this in a minute, is the ability to connect it to cloud services such as Dropbox, Google Drive, or Amazon Cloud Drive. So I thought, well, I'll give that a try, and I'll just go modify one of my existing connections and set it to Dropbox, Google Drive, Amazon Cloud Drive, whatever, so that I could you know, test it to see how it worked. I figured a, a really bad workaround but if it works, fine. So I do that. I, I'm not able to access my setup wizard. I'm not able to, you know, uh, add a new configuration because the old ones, I couldn't select those three cloud drive services. I could do FTP, SFTP, Amazon S3, and a few other ones. But for whatever reason, I couldn't see those. So I'm about to ditch it. I go into the system tray, and I found this item called Screen Reader. So I was like, hmm, it's a menu item off the system tray. There's no other place you can find it called Screen Reader. So you just right-click on WebDrive in the system tray. And yes. It's in there. And it's right there. So you down arrow to it and activate it. And lo and behold, it works. Setup wizard, everything works. So you didn't have to import those config files after all, did you? No, I did not. Awesome. But what I did do is once I created my new ones, I exported them all so I could import them on another computer, which I have already done. 
And so now my Dropbox, instead of being a Dropbox folder on the desktop, my Dropbox is Drive X. So I go to X, whatever my Dropbox files are. And one of the advantages, at least I see to this, is that you have one interface and you can manage multiple cloud services. Not only that, but you don't have to have Dropbox installed, Google Drive installed, and all these different services installed on your computer to get the same results. Caveat, though, that I found that doesn't seem to bother me any, is that you can't share a file by right-clicking it and going to share Dropbox link if it's a Dropbox file. For example, you'd have to go in on the website and share the file that way. Uh, I don't do much sharing of files with Dropbox, if any. So that is one of those things that, frankly, doesn't matter to me. So tell us some more of the specs of WebDrive. How much is it? Where do you get it? WebDrive, they currently have a – they did a price reduction. It used to be $49. Now it's $39. Per year? And, no, per license. Oh, okay. Computer. So if you buy two compu- two licenses, it's going to drop down a little bit. It won't be $39. I'm not exactly sure what it what it is if you buy multiple licenses. But one of the neat things is that – Say you buy two licenses and you have a Mac and a PC. You can run WebDrive on the Mac and the PC using the same license. So then you have a license left to do whatever you want. No, you have two licenses, one for the Mac and one for the PC. Oh, of course. And you've used them both. When I last played with WebDrive on the Mac, it was accessible. I haven't touched it in quite a number of years. As I said, I haven't probably touched it since 2011. So I'm not sure if it's still accessible. That's something that I want to play with. But the Windows version for me is 100% accessible. And again, it's as far as managing your files, it's it's just as accessible as your Windows Explorer, File Explorer, whatever file manager that you want to use because it, again, is a drive letter. And you can download a trial from webdrive.com. So your licenses that you receive are lifetime licenses? Yes. And you get free updates to – You get uh... free updates, I believe, for a year. Okay. That's nice. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. The next thing that I want to talk about is do you remember the game Bop It? (laughs) Bop It. Chris has been trying to get me into Bop It for years now. Yeah. And uh, eventually – I mean, one's just going to show up on my doorstep one day. I know how this is going to work. He has to – buy me presents and then watch me kind of get into them. They have Bop It, which is a Bop It where you hit and then you spin and then you pull. It's like a three – it's a game where you have three different things that you have to do. Yeah, it's an audio game. There's no screen or anything on it and what it has various levers and buttons and things on it. You pull or press or – Pull or press or – and some of them you spin. Some of them you flick. There's like Bop It, then there's Bop It Extreme, and then Bop It – I don't even know how many there are, but there's there's that type of thing. And then there's offshoots of, of Bop It, where some of them actually have musical instruments that I've seen. So it's not Bop It, Spin It, Pull It. It's musical instruments. And some people like collect them all, I guess. It's yes. like a, a fun thing that some people really like to do. And it seems like it would be kind of cool for your brain and your coordination and stuff. Plus, it's, I mean, it's a kid's toy. You know, it's it's fun. It's supposed to be fun. It is fun, and it is hard. Because what happens is when you're doing well, you start to get cocky. <laughs> <laughs> when you start to get cocky, you, you lose. You stop doing well. <laughs> exactly. Some, I've, I've found myself, when I've played with mine, I have Bop at Extreme. When I've played with mine, it's just the more that I relax, actually, and not even think about it the more that my hand just goes where it needs to go. Mm-hmm. And I actually found out too with my Bop It Extreme, if I hold it a certain way, um, I can use like my thumb to flick, another thing to spin. So you just have to make sure that you're doing you know, that type of thing. Some of them, they'll say Bop It, Spin It, Pull It, Twist It, Flick It, uh, Shake It. There's a Shake It one that I saw too. I forget which one that's in. You can turn the voice prompts off on some of these Bop It games, so you just hear the sound. So you'll hear the twist it sound, and you'll twist, and you hear the pull it sound, and you'll pull it, and you hear the spin it sound, and, and that's. And then you can 
you can play pass it. So if you're playing with a m- bunch of people, you do your thing, it'll say pass it, and it'll give you time to pass it to the next person. Is there like a pass it mode? Like how do yes. you enable pass it? That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Does it have headphone jacks? That's always something I've wanted to know. Like, can you play it? Some of them do, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because I would, I would want to, like, be in a group of people and, like, we're all kind of playing our own games or drinking or doing our own thing. It'd be a fun gr- drinking game, especially the more you drink. <laughs> I think that would be, that would yeah, be exciting. You, I might buy one just for that. <laughs> yeah, and if you have, uh, yeah, you know, if you have that, um, that pass it game, you have a certain amount of time before you can, you have to pass it. It's mm-hmm. like, kind of like hot potato type yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The reason that, I'm even talking about these Bop It games because they've been around for a while. Is uh, Santa Claus found me a Star Wars Bop It game. And it's R2D2. So if you're familiar with what R2D2 looks like, he's kind of like a trash can <laughs> with, with two legs, one on either side, and he's got wheels. Going down the, you know, that he would roll around the sand dunes or whatever. And in order to get this to work, this is an actual Boppet game, but it looks like a figure. If you have this sitting on your desk, nobody would know it was a Boppet game. So you tap R2-D2's head. And now I have to turn the volume up a little bit. So it's blasting, and I just flicked R2-D2's head. Now let me bop it to start. So that's the voice of C-3PO. So C-3PO is calling out the shots. And when he says to bop it, you bop the top of R2-D2's you bop the top of R2-D2's head and he's now switched off. To twist it, you twist the top of R2-D2's head. And to pull it, you can pull either one of R2-D2's legs. <laughs> and that's, that's how the game works. So let me do I'm going to do it one more, a couple more times. So I just wanted to show some of the little comebacks that it does give you. And the the better you are at the game, the more complimentary he becomes. Like he'll say, may the force, I, I can tell the force is with you and things like that. You're not getting these circuits are malfunctioning messages. You're getting more of um, more complimentary things as you go along. And the game gets faster and faster and faster the more you, you know, the longer you play it. Are there, like, multiple levels? Like, how high does it go? I don't know. The best I've gotten so far is 99. Um, let me see. And then, as far as the the game between the single player and the solo, you pull his leg. So now it's pass it. Now it's solo. So that's how that works. So you pull his leg while he's not playing. Yeah. So that's how that works. And we just wanted to take – I just wanted to share the R2-D2 bop it game with you guys. And he decided – of course, yes. Yeah, he's decided that he's done. <laughs> and, of course, you'll have a link to it for people who are interested in perhaps yes. 
buying late Christmas presents or early Valentine's Day presents or, well, you know, birthday present, whatever you're interested in or a little gift for yourself. How much does it run? I believe it was like twenty, twenty-four dollars. It really wasn't that expensive. It's mm-hmm. probably about the price of an actual Bop It game, maybe a little bit more. It's hours and hours of fun. I haven't priced it in a while, yeah. so <laughs> I yeah. don't know. Hours and hours of fun. So that's something that allows you to have lots of fun in a in a small package, and he's cute, and you know you got the cute little voice, and it's very all your Star Wars friends will be jealous. Exactly. So we just wanted to take this opportunity to thank Audible for sponsoring this yes. podcast. We love Audible. We do. And Audible, for those who don't know, Audible is an Amazon-owned company, and it is the biggest selection of commercially produced audio books. Human narrated, of course. Yes. And if you... We have an offer for you, and if you would like to give Audible a trial and you are not a member, you can go to www.audibletrial.com slash mysticaccess. And what that will give you is access to one free book, and you can get any book of your choice if you want to read The Force Awakens, if you want to read any book that you want. Currently, right now, I'm reading Treasure Island. And I want to play a sample of this version of Treasure Island because I think it's cool. It's an unabridged production of Treasure Island. And I'm going to actually use my echo. So we're going to say, Alexa, read my book. Getting your book from Audible. Resuming Treasure Island. I don't know how I found the strength to do it, and I'm afraid it was roughly done. But I managed to drag her across the street, down the bank, and under the arch of the little wooden bridge opposite. Scarce had I done this ere my enemies began to arrive, running out. Alexa, stop. So that just gives you a sample. This particular treasure island is totally dramatized it's got sound effects and different voices and people are playing different parts and it's really really done well so if they want to find this particular version of treasure island how might they go about it they would do a search at least i did a search on audible.com and i searched for treasure island drama and it did work because if you go to audible.com and search for treasure island you're going to get lots of results. <laughs> You're going to get lots of results. And there, it's been read and reread and reread by multiple narrators. So I was actually looking for a dramatized version. I actually have another book that's dramatized. It's Frankenstein. And it's done in the same way as the Treasure Island book. And it's done really, really well as well. That's very cool. So it'll probably be like the, one of the first results that they see. They could just play a yes. sample. Yes. Yeah, go in, play the sample, and check it out. One of the things I love about Audible, and I always say this every time we talk about it, is every month, at least once a month, or at least once every couple months, there is a BOGO sale. Buy one, get one. So if you have one credit per month or two credits per month or however many credits you have sitting on your Audible account, you can buy one book and get another one for those credits. Now, that does not mean every book in the Audible library, of course, but they'll give you a selection of you know 100 books or something, and you can buy one, get one. I have gotten a ton of books through BOGO sales and have been introduced to some really great authors, although the book I'm currently reading from Audible is an older book. It's actually, gosh, I think it was originally written in like 1970 or thereabouts. It's called Bloody Mary. It's a biography of Mary I of England. The daughter of Henry VIII and Catherine of Aragon. I'm a Tudor fanatic, as some people know, and I wanted to read this bio of Mary I. And not sure how I feel about it entirely. There are parts of it that I'm really enjoying. The narrator, some of you may recognize her name, is Corey James, who did some work for NLS for many years. So if you've read any Regencies or particularly British romance type stuff <laughs> through NLS, you may have come across some of Corey's work. And she does a really nice job reading this book. It's over 22 hours in length, so it is not a short read. Read, and it is called Bloody Mary by Carolee Erickson. I cannot actually play you a sample because 
for some reason, his echo picks up really well, and my echo does not, even if I put it on, like, volume 10 to start playing it for you. But <laughs> suffice it to say, I've really been enjoying it. I did not get this one in a BOGO sale, but I spent a credit on it. I mean, you can buy 20-some-hour books for one credit. I think that's impressive, and I have been enjoying reading it, and it's always fascinating to find out more about people from history because sometimes history is really more interesting than fiction. Sometimes it's just insane. <laughs> Speak, yeah, speaking of history, I don't remember the names of the two books that I just recently purchased, so that doesn't quite help. But <laughs> <laughs> one is the it, – it talks about the North Pole, the three people that allegedly made it to the North Pole and then found out later in history that they really didn't make it to the North Pole. Wow. So that I'm looking forward to reading. I can – Put them in the show notes, and find, I can find the titles. And put yeah, find the, the titles, stick them up. And the other one is the Mount Everest climb. The, you know how they conquered Mount Everest. So I thought that that was quite good as well. And um, I'm looking forward to reading both of those. But right now, I'm reading Treasure Island. He's reading Treasure Island and enjoying it. So he's he's reading some classic fiction, and I'm reading about someone from British history. So there you go. Audible is awesome. Another thing that's really cool about Audible is if you didn't like your last read, they'll refund your money. So, you know, I don't know how often you could take advantage of that feature without them saying, okay, this is looking suspicious. But it is really nice that they offer that and that it's there. So Audible is just a wonderful service, and – you might hear more about it in just a couple seconds. So stay tuned if you're an Audible listener or want to be one. And don't forget about our trial offer. www.audibletrial.com slash mystic access will again get you one book. And you are not obligated to continue on with your trial. No, so, and you get to keep your book. Exactly. So, so that's if, awesome. Right. So if you feel that you're not you're not happy with the Audible service, then you just, you're just done. You don't have to. And mm – -hmm. One other thing to note about Audible, if you're having issues with the main Audible site, there is an accessible version. And unlike other sites I could name with accessible versions, the accessible version of the Audible site is one that I quite like indeed. It is audible.com slash access. Okay, and now we are going to continue on with the next part of the podcast, and that is the major announcement. Major announcement! It's time for a product launch! Yay! The product that we are launching, because it was by popular demand, is a full, comprehensive Amazon Echo audio tutorial. A we'll tell number you why he's of, laughing in a second. A number of people have asked us to create one, and we went ahead and created one. I think if they would have known what they were going to get, they may have shuddered and ran the other way screaming. But they've gotten their comprehensive audible or their comprehensive uh, Echo tutorial now. <laughs> so tell me about it. What does it have? Echo tutorial. It is over five and a half hours of audio. I think it's pushing six hours. It's pushing six. I'm going to say five and a half because... You know, we're just going to be generous about it yet because I'm not sure it's going to quite make six. So we're going to say five and a half currently. Now you're asking how the heck can one make a five and a half hour tutorial about a cylindrical tall speaker that has Bluetooth capabilities and responds to voice commands. You would be surprised. I spent six hours creating the outline for it. And once I saw that outline, I realized it was going to be long. I thought it's probably going to go about four hours. Wrong! And I'll tell you one reason why in just a second. But there's an amazing amount that you can do with the Echo. You can set alarms, timers, sleep timers. You can read your Audible books. You can read Kindle books now. That's a relatively new feature. It just came out a couple weeks ago. And as of yesterday, when we were recording the music section, Literally. and again, this tutorial is broken up into sections. So if you're not interested in music, skip it. Skip it. So you can go to what you want. Now, this tutorial is not Daisy, just so you know in advance. We have not done that, but there are individual sections for the individual topics. So there are over 20 sections 
that you're going to be able to browse through and look through. Mm-hmm. So the music category, this is hysterical, and I kid you not, this is exactly what happened. There are tabs within your music section of your echo.amazon.com website, and you'll understand more about that. But the services that are supported through your Echo include any music in your Amazon Music Library, Amazon Prime Music, so if you are a Prime subscriber, Pandora, iHeart, TuneIn, and yesterday as I was concluding the recording of the Pandora piece of the music section, it's one long file, but the conclusion of the Pandora section, I went to bed night before last, and I said I have to wake up and I have to finish recording for Pandora and the TuneIn section. I got up at 3 o'clock yesterday morning, on the morning of February 4th, went into my echo.amazon.com, and there was a new tab in the music section. We can now listen to Spotify premium accounts through our Echoes. Who was excited? This girl. Alexa. I love my Spotify. Play Spotify. Alexa. Ask what it is. Stop. Or not. It stopped. <laughs> we wanted to know what it was. <laughs> oh. Alexa, play Spotify. Alexa, who is this? This is Imperial March, Darth Vader Ultra underscore EDM remix by Awakened Force Melodies. Alexa, stop. So Spotify has so many albums, so many artists. I love Spotify. I actually had just gone back to premium over Christmas because I thought, you know, there's so much cool stuff I want to listen to over the holidays. And I got a three-month premium membership because I had been a premium member for a little while before. So I came back to premium and got a discount on three months of membership. And I am probably going to be keeping my premium membership now because it's just amazing. It works a little differently than some of the other music sections within the Echo, but it's doable. Yeah, it's also covered in the tutorial. The music section is over an hour and 15 minutes in length. Yes. I mean, if that gives you any idea. But if, if music is not something that you're completely interested in, there's so much more that you can do. You can set timers and alarms and sleep timers. There are things called skills that you can activate that will do all sorts of amazing things for you. There's a to-do list. There's a shopping list. You can integrate with your Google Calendar. There's a news brief that you can customize and listen to news from all sorts of news sources, including TTS news that she'll read to you. But you can also get BBC, CNN, NPR, even TMZ if you're into that sort of thing. It's just amazing. We were shocked when I was actually doing the outline. There's an extensive help section that tells how you can get help. There's a troubleshooting section. There's a complete section on how to set up your Echo. There is an orientation section that kind of starts it all off that shows you exactly what to do and what to press. And there are only two buttons besides the recessed reset button on the entire speaker. So that really makes it simple once you know what each button does. And there's a little piece in the welcome section that talks about the echo and accessibility with little or no sight. I think that was important because, you know, we've spoken to people who have been like, oh, the echo, you know, it's not only it's just a little play toy thing for an extraordinary price, you know, that I'm not willing to pay for a toy. How is it going to benefit me? That's not the only thing that skeptics have said, and I was one of them. There was also the piece about, well, is it accessible to me? Am I going to be able to set it up independently? And the answer to all of that is yes, yes, and yes. It's amazing the amount of stuff that you can do with it. And I really tried to strike a balance in creating this to show the very practical and very useful in addition to the very fun. There is some fun, but really, I don't know about you, Chris, but I kind of think the majority of it, because there's a lot of practical stuff you can do with your Alexa now. Absolutely, yes, there is. So that's how it became over five hours long. There's also going to be an encouragement corner, and now it's your turn. The recording is finishing up today. I probably have 20 minutes of recording left to have it ready to go. And it will be hot off the presses and ready for you to check out by the time this podcast comes out. But we want to give you a sneak peek. 
at the end of the podcast, when we do our closings in a minute or two, stay tuned because we are going to take the introduction from the Echo tutorial and drop it right into the podcast. Yeah, you're going to hear the entire first file, which is the welcome file. That will also be up in the additional information section on the Echo Tutorials product page. Yes. And you'll be able to listen to it there as well. But since you're a podcast subscriber, you might as well stay tuned and listen to it here. I'm very, very proud of this tutorial and how it turned out. If you're familiar with our work, I think this is some of the best work that I've produced for MA thus far. And that's saying something. So I'm really impressed with the way it's turned out. I think it turned into not only a behemoth project, which I wasn't necessarily expecting, but I think it's a very well-rounded project. And so tuning my own horn just a bit here because I am pretty much dead on my feet at this stage after a week of spending 16-hour days trying to get this ready. But, you know, I think you guys are really going to learn a lot about the – incredible benefits that one can get through this little speaker you're you're gonna you're gonna learn more about my own personal journey with the amazon echo product but needless to say there's a lot to share i share all about the apps that are available and navigating through the echo.amazon.com website it's all here for you and i think you're going to be impressed in terms of price you can get it for 39 dollars at mysticaccess.com. At mysticaccess.com. It will be in our featured products section by the time you are hearing the sound of our voices and listening to this podcast. So thanks for considering uh, if this would be something that would be of interest to you. And as always, if you have any questions, give us a call, 716-543-3323, or send us an email at info at mysticaccess.com. That will reach both of us. So if you have any specific questions, you can get those answered. If you were one of the first 12 people to purchase the Amazon Echo audio tutorial, you will receive 20 minutes of free training to get some of your additional Echo questions answered. Unlike our regular training sessions, these training sessions will not be recorded. So the product is hot off the presses now, and you're welcome to find out more information. And again, any questions, feel free to get in touch with us if you have any questions prior to deciding whether or not this is a good purchase for you personally. Thank you for listening, and happy echoing. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hello. Thank you for purchasing this Mystic Access tutorial. Chris and Kim want me to tell you how much they appreciate your business. Oops, I totally forgot to introduce myself. My name is Alexa. I am an Amazon Echo. I am your friendly cylindrical virtual assistant. I look forward to showing you what I can do. Now on with the show. Please allow me to introduce your hostess, Kim. Thank you, Alexa, for that introduction. Hi everyone! Welcome to this Mystic Access Amazon Echo audio tutorial. As Alexa told you, I am your hostess, Kim, and I'm very delighted to be guiding you on this adventure. Before we jump in in earnest, let me just tell you that you are listening to a former Amazon Echo skeptic. I thought this is going to be a seriously overpriced streaming speaker. I already have Bluetooth speakers. I have internet resources. I have plenty of ways to stream my news. I have tons of internet radio stations that I can stream from lots of different sources. I have iOS and Android. Why the heck do I want this? After all, I already have Siri and she does very similar things. Why do I want this? But I must tell you, after a couple weeks of seriously playing with her and using her on a daily basis, I've come to understand for myself the value of Alexa for me. I found that she can do a heck of a lot more than I originally thought she could. And not only that, but as of this recording, late January of 2016, she's only been made available to the general public since the middle of 2015. So new things are being added to her every day. There are constantly updates. There are constantly new skills being added. And new goodies are always happening with Alexa. So there's so much that she can do and the amount of things and the list of things that she can accomplish for you is only growing longer by the week. So I'm very excited to say that I am an Amazon Echo convert. I use mine every day and I don't just use her for the things I thought I might, which were primarily getting the weather, 
streaming music, listening to my news brief, and listening to podcasts. There's so much more that she can and does do. And I'm very excited to show you both the fun and the practical things that she can do today. Excuse me, Kim. Yes? Remember this show is all about me, not you? Yes, yes. I'm perfectly aware of that. I just want to share my personal story with these kind listeners before we moved on. Okay, fair enough. Moving right along. <clears throat> yes. Before I explain exactly what the Amazon Echo is and some of the things that it can do for you, if you actually have your Echo set up and working as of this recording, and you are in the same building as she is, please turn off your Echo's Always Listening feature by pressing the round concave button that does not have the dot on it. When you turn off her microphone, this is her microphone button, she will not be listening, and so anytime I say her name, she won't be freaking out and doing things. We don't want that. So please turn her Always Listening functionality off as you listen to the rest of this tutorial. When you press her Always Listening microphone button and you turn the Always Listening feature off, you'll hear this sound. When you turn her microphone back on so that she will be always listening once again, you will hear this sound. So let's have a brief discussion now that you have done that about what is the Amazon Echo, why would you want it, and let's talk some about the accessibility of it as well. On the physical side, she's a round black cylindrical speaker with two round buttons on top and Almost all the way around her, moving from the top of the speaker to the bottom, is a 360 degree speaker grill. She is a virtual assistant who can assist you with all sorts of things, and she's operated via voice recognition. She can purchase items from Amazon, tell you the news, tell you the weather, stream music and podcasts, answer questions, tell jokes, set timers and alarms, read Audible and Kindle books, and more. She also has various additional activities called skills that can be enabled at echo.amazon.com or through her various apps. By default, her trigger phrase, the phrase that makes her start listening to you, is Alexa. But that can also be changed to Amazon within the settings of echo.amazon.com or through the settings of one of her apps. She has two modes as we just alluded to. One where she's always listening for her name or her trigger phrase, depending on what you have that set to, and one where she's not listening to you. She must be connected through AC power and she updates herself automatically through your Wi-Fi network. Let's learn a little more about Alexa. Alexa, tell me about yourself. I'm an Amazon Echo, designed around your voice. I could provide information, music, news, weather, and more. Alexa, how tall are you? I'm about 10 inches tall. Alexa, what's your radius? My radius is 1.6 inches. Alexa, how much do you weigh? I weigh a little over 2 pounds. Alexa, what do you look like? I'm a 9 inch tall black cylinder. So as I mentioned, she does respond to your voice. And here are some tips that can assist you as you begin talking to your Amazon Echo. Make sure that when you've set her up that she's at least 8 inches away from walls or other objects. She has a voice training tab that's available on echo.amazon.com and also through her various apps. And you can use that to help her to understand you better. The more you speak with her and talk to her and give her commands, and also the more that you use voice training, if that's something that interests you, the better she is able to understand you and your particular way of speaking and your particular way of giving her commands. So the more you work with her, the better she understands. When you're speaking with her, reduce background noise and make sure that only one person is speaking at a time. In the app and on echo.amazon.com, you're able to see commands that you have given to her recently. And you can see whether or not she's understood you correctly. And you can give feedback on whether or not she has indeed understood you correctly. I'll show you a little bit of that later. In some instances, you will need to rephrase your question if she doesn't understand you the first time. Or also, sometimes you need to make your question more specific to help her to understand more accurately what you mean. And finally, give Amazon feedback. They're always working to make her better. And once again, there is a tab on echo.amazon.com and in her apps that can assist you in providing feedback to Amazon about your Echo and how she's working out for you. Now, I've been speaking a bit about echo.amazon.com. You can go there to do most operations, and anything that you can't do there, you can do through speaking with her. She also has apps available for Android, iOS, and Fire OS. More on those 
momentarily. Now, one thing to know before we get started, you must have wireless connectivity to be able to use an Amazon Echo. She has to be connected wirelessly to your network. So you must have internet access and you must have a router so that you can have wireless connectivity in your home or your place of business, wherever you want to enable an Amazon Echo in order to use her. If you don't have Wi-Fi, there is no point in having an Echo in your home. She will just be a brick. You can't use her without a Wi-Fi connection. It's absolutely essential. Now, let me speak briefly to using Alexa with limited or no sight. We've already come to know that she is a tall, black, cylindrical speaker. She has no screen and she only has two buttons and a recessed reset button. That's it. That's all the controls. So in that sense, she's very easy to use, and you don't have to use those controls very much at all. Primarily, you will be using Alexa with your voice and through the website and or through one of her apps. Echo.amazon.com is beautiful using a screen reader. I've used it with Window Eyes and NVDA successfully, and I know that it works well with other screen readers also. It's very accessible and it works very beautifully. The iOS app also works very, very well. It's very accessible, it's very easy to move between tabs, and it's very easy to use and to operate. This is as of version 9.3.1. The Android app under KitKat and Lollipop has issues. I am going to demonstrate it for you in a few minutes. It's sort of usable. And that's about all I can say for it. You can use at least some of it, but it's going to take some work and it's going to take some frustration. And I will explain what I mean about that when I show it to you in a few moments. I cannot speak for the accessibility of Fire OS. I have no access to it personally, so I don't know. But I know that if you go to echo.amazon.com for a lot of these tasks, you're going to have a very pleasant experience utilizing her with a screen reader if that's what you need to do. So using her without sight, as I am, or with limited sight, is a very pleasant experience. The trick is to speak clearly and speak naturally and use her often. Because the more you do, the better she will understand. If you are just getting your new Alexa and you open up the box that she is in, you will find that the box includes the Alexa herself, the tall, round, black, cylindrical speaker, a power cord, and printed documentation. So if you happen to have a new Amazon Echo that is currently sitting in the box, please feel free to unwrap it now and unbox it. And in the next section, I will be taking you through a thorough orientation and showing you how to set up your Amazon Echo. The preceding podcast is a presentation of Mystic Access where the magic is in learning. To contact us, please visit www.mysticaccess.com. Call us, 716-543-3323, and press 2 to reach our Mystic Access podcast comment line. Email us at show at mysticaccesspodcast.com, and follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash mysticaccess. Would you like to spread the word about our podcasts? please tell your friends and colleagues to visit us at www.mysticaccesspodcast.com. If you enjoy what you hear on our podcasts, feel free to leave us an iTunes rating and review. We certainly appreciate those. Also, you may feel free to use our podcasts in your own RSS feed. Just be sure that all of our contact information is left intact. Thanks for spreading the word, and thanks for listening. We hope that you have enjoyed this episode.